I welcome you all to TEDx Aston University 2021. Oh my, the girls them sugar, so can I make love to her, then I'm in a rush, pass me the keys to my trust, oh my, Zach with the girls them luck. What do I get again? <laughs> Let me see a show of hands for anybody who's enjoyed the talk so far, round of applause. All right, fantastic. So here we go. I'm here to close the show. So let's go. Bob Marley, in his song Exodus, sings, Open your eyes and look within. Are you satisfied with the life you're living? But let's remix that a little. I'm going to ask you to close your eyes. Like, actually, close your eyes and look within. Ask yourself, are you feeling fulfilled with the life you're living? My name is Zachary Harding. I'm the founder and executive chairman of Delta Capital Partners, a private equity firm based in Kingston, Jamaica. Today, I'm here, however, as your dance hall CEO to share with you a decision-making model that I've come up with based on dance hall culture. Dance hall is Jamaican's urban music culture. And this is what the dance hall looks like. You've probably enjoyed the music before and maybe didn't even realize it. Have you ever heard of Sean Paul? Yeah. I was Sean Paul's first manager before my brother Jeremy Harding managed him and he won a Grammy and a bunch of awards. What about Shaggy, Spice, Steph London, Bounty Killer or Beanie Man? Right, well, we produced Beanie Man, Sim Simo, on the two hard records label. In other cultures, dancehall has been called raga or reggaeton, and is often incorporated into pop or Afrobeats. So songs like Justin Bieber's Sorry and Drake's Controller are both set to dancehall beats. Dancehall has become a mainstream way of life for Jamaicans. The music reflects the experience, the expressions of contemporary Jamaican life. In fact, in Jamaica's last general elections, members of parliament even had an informal versa-style battle for whose campaign had the best dancehall remix, or dub plates, as we call them. I can't make this up, true story. I started my career as a dancehall DJ otherwise known as a selector. And for me, dancehall artists are really contemporary philosophers explaining highly complex real-life scenarios. Dancehall provides a unique lens to help us think and act differently. For me, dancehall has been my corporate masterclass. And being a selector DJ has greatly influenced the way I think and act in the business arena. I started out my career in marketing. I had a lot of success in turning companies around and even making some brands into household names in Jamaica. And at that time, I had a very young family, Tori and Zara, and I never really stopped to think much about how I was doing it and how I was making it all happen. And one day, somebody asked me, what do you think is your secret to success? And to my own surprise, I answered, it's from being a DJ. So let me explain. As a DJ, I'm continuously reading the crowd or target market to deliver the right product, such as song, to get the right buy-in, like response to the song to say that they like it. Any Jamaicans in the house? You know that sound that we make, right? We call it a forward. So, Wanting a crowd reaction 
is normal for all DJs across genres. But for dancehall, songs are often played in a musical battle format called a sound clash, where the crowd has veto power. So if you're lame, the crowd will actually boo you off the stage. So the DJ is ending up a winner or a loser. If they're not just good or bad. And it's the same with being a CEO. You have to make good decisions. And if you don't, you won't last very long on the corporate stage. So in my corporate life, I have to make the right decisions in real times to make all my stakeholders satisfied. So in both cases, the pressure is always on to win. So the question is, how do I do it? Today, I'm here to share my answer to that question. How do we consistently make good decisions? But good decisions has to be good for you, right? It's subjective. What might be right for me might not be right for you. Smaller decisions aren't so scary because we learn how to make them at a young age, and then we practice them, building a ton of experience. But for more complex decisions, ones that will change our life's trajectory, we go overboard. We panic, we poll our friends, we open 27 tabs on Google. And when we have to make really big decisions, we often even feel lost. We don't know where to start. We either freeze up or employ the more famous hit or miss strategy, which sometimes works and sometimes doesn't. Well, what if there was a formula that could help you make better decisions in your life consistently. I've developed such a formula based on my DJ experience, and I'm about to share it with you here tonight for the first time. This is a world premiere, and I hope it will make you make better decisions as much as it has helped me to make decisions in my life. I call it the careful decision-making formula. That is, decisions made with C, a-R-E, care, that leave you feeling full, fulfilled. C is for crossroads, A is for authenticity, R is for risk, and E is for emotion. So let's break it down. It starts by recognizing when you're at a crossroads. You have to look past the distractions and become aware of when it's time to make a decision, and then commit to that decision in order to get the desired result. The greatest tool for personal power is deliberate decision making. So when people say, take control of your life, what they really mean is, be deliberate about how and when you make decisions. By acknowledging the decision point, we accept that the source of our power is in the decisions that we make. So I always tell my daughters, life is just a series of decisions and choices, so make sure you make good ones. I learned to time these decision points from being a DJ. It all has to do with when to drop the beat and when to mix it out. But luckily, we all have that intuitive sense of when it's time for a change. We all know when something just doesn't feel right. I can prove it. Let's say you listen to a playlist and a certain song comes on and you loved it a month ago, you even had it on repeat, but now, it offends your entire soul, your very sensibilities. You know you don't want to hear that song, you want to hear a different song. That is a decision point instinct. <clears throat> needing to change a song is not so different with needing to change something in your life. What do you really want in life versus what are you just tolerating? You have to listen to your own needs and wants. When you feel stuck and you keep thinking, I need a change or I feel something was different. Then you're at a crossroads. It's decision time, so just accept it. We make 90% of our decisions subconsciously, where to sit, what to eat. I guarantee you right now, somebody's thinking, when is a good time to sneak off to the loo? But you have to be able to follow through, because without committing, a decision is just a random thought. And Without that commitment, that random thought is a setup for just future regret. If somebody needs to go to the loo now and doesn't follow through, I think we might all regret it. <laughs> After the crossroads, the next formula in it is A, authenticity. People throw this word around a lot. Authenticity 
according to Dr. Brené Brown, is the daily practice of letting go who we think we're supposed to be and embracing who we are. In the dance hall, one of my favorite singers, Chronix, explains that authenticity is critical. He says, in a dance hall style, I know everybody are going to like we, but we're well iry. Meaning, in the dance hall, not everyone is going to like us, but we're still fine, iry, because we don't love likes. He goes on, me not do it for the love, me do it for the likes. Meaning, I do it for the love of it, but not just for the social media likes or clicks. Then he sings, success doesn't come overnight. Let them know it's success over hype. We do it for the love, not do it for the likes. So again, authenticity is subjective, right? Where I come from, it can look like this. Almost comical without the authenticity. But with dancehall's authenticity, this is self-expression. When you make authentic decisions, ask yourself, how will you feel after? Make sure you can live with it, because as Chronic said, others may not like the decisions you make. In the sports arena, Naomi Osaka made a careful, see what I did there? Decision to skip press conferences after tournaments due to anxiety. Now, many people would have thought that that was a wrong decision to make, and many people would have you know, discredited her for that, but whether we like it or not, she didn't do it for the love or the likes. She did it for her mental health, her peace, and her stability. If you find yourself making lots of lesser of two evil decisions, this might mean your authenticity is out of alignment. So we covered C, A. Now it's time for R, risk. George Bernard Shaw said, the reasonable man adapts himself to the world. The unreasonable one adapts the world to himself. Therefore, all progress depends on the unreasonable man. So I think he's right, because the unreasonable man or woman usually takes the biggest risks. Risk is usually why we avoid making tough decisions that lead to a change. When most people hear risk, they think of what could go wrong, right? But today, let's remix the risk, Jamaican style because we don't really culturally identify with risk. Imagine, we're a tropical island with no snow, yet we formed a bobsled team and entered the Winter Olympics, which inspired the entire world and even led to a Disney movie. So what at first opened us up to criticism, eventually opened us up to admiration. Remixing risk is about gauging the reward. No one expects us to continually beat our global counterparts, but we often do. We start with less, but we focus on what we have to gain. Yo young Jamaican footballer, Leon Bailey, who recently signed with Aston Villa, <laughs> recently signed and cracked a goal in a three-love victory. I guarantee you he wasn't thinking about what could go wrong when he baked that shot, right? He was just focusing on the win. And that's how people with a winning mindset operate. So when you're making decisions, ask yourself, what could go right? What could it be worth to me? Jamaica is just a little over double the size of Birmingham, but we punch way above our weight class and has everything to do with an attitude we call being bossy. Bossy is a type of bravado, powered by the ability to execute and back it up. Jamaicans expect that once you've chosen to go for the reward, you must follow through with confidence. Aside from Leon Bailey, perhaps the best example of Jamaican bossiness is Usain Bolt. In his first Olympics in 2004, Bolt was only 18 years old and touted as the next legend of the track. But he was eliminated in the first round. And at home, we gave him a really hard time for it. If Bolt had looked at risk as everything that could go wrong, then he would have just given up. He would have just quit, accepted his failure, and walked away. 
But when bold hears risk, he gets bossy. When they question how he was doing it, he got bossy. And when he said, when they said it was a fluke, and he went on to win every world title and even reset his own Olympic and world records, he got bossy. So always assess the risk but be sure to consider the upside of the win. You've come to the crossroads with your most authentic self and remix the risk. Now for the final piece. You must fuel the decision with E, the right emotion. How are you preparing your emotions to match your decisions? You must be emotionally aligned with your decisions in order to sustain the desired outcomes. If you want to be powerful, you have to conquer fear. If you want to be a leader, you have to control your anger. And if you want to be influential, you may need to practice great appreciation. Like Sir Willard, he had to overcome challenges to become a winner. So ask yourself, are my emotions compatible with my decisions? Are the emotions behind my decision mostly positive or negative? And what emotional support do I need to sustain the outcome? No matter how logical we think we are, we're all emotional beings. Success depends on navigating our own emotions as well as those of others. This is known as emotional intelligence. Empathy, someone said earlier. Understanding this is absolutely critical because you cannot control other people's behavior, but you can control how you react to their behavior. Your ability to control your own emotions in any decision-making situation is actually your hidden superpower. Practicing emotional intelligence will not only turn you into a decision-making machine, it will also make you an unstoppable magnetic force capable of attracting all your desires and manifesting your wildest dreams. Dancehall University teaches us that we are in control of our destiny. In Sizzler Calandre's song, Rise to the Occasion, he says, it's for you to make the best in life. Know that you've got the chance. Get up and step towards your goal. It's all right. Fulfill your needs and wants. In the dance hall, the DJ is accountable for the vibe. And in business, the CEO is accountable for the company's performance. In your life, the only person responsible for that decision is you. As my dad used to say to me, son, it takes many to deliberate, but one to decide. Remember, you get to choose your own theme song in life, and you get to decide when to drop that beat. Thank you very much. <laughs>